Hey, common questions I hear when talking about signals involve RxJS. Do signals replace RxJS? Is RxJS going away? How do signals work with RxJS? To answer these questions, let's take an Angular application that uses RxJS and modify it to include signals. This video assumes you have a basic knowledge of Signals, the new feature in Angular v16. Signals provide more reactivity and finer control over change detection. If you aren't familiar with Signals, consider watching my introductory Signals video first. You can find the link to that video in the upper right corner here or in the video notes. Let's run it and see this application in action. Here is the welcome page. Yep, we're selling Star Wars vehicles. Click the Vehicle List option to see the list of vehicles. Select a vehicle, the code REACTS, and we see the vehicle detail on the right. We also see the movies that this vehicle appeared in. Cool! Notice that the list on the left now highlights that selected vehicle, making it easy to see which item was selected. Let's take a look at the code. Our first step is to ensure we have a version of Angular that supports signals. Open the package.json file, and we see that this application is Angular v15. Signals require v16 or higher. Let's open a command prompt, and we'll use ng-update to update our project to the next version. ng-update, at angular slash cli, at angular slash core, dash dash next. This takes a moment to install the new packages, so we'll use the magic of video and zoom ahead a bit. And we see the next version of Angular that it installed was next.7, which is an early version of Angular v16. Now let's close the terminal and close the package.json file. Before we can display the list of vehicles, we need to retrieve vehicle data. So let's start with the vehicle service. Scrolling down, here we see the URL endpoint, which uses the public SW API, SW for Star Wars. We want the list of vehicles. We'll ignore the subject for now. We'll talk about that in a moment. Right now, we want to focus on retrieving the list of vehicles for display. Here is our HTTP GET to get the list of vehicles. To keep things simple, we're only getting the first page of vehicles from the API. Let's open the vehicle.ts file for a moment. The Swapi API vehicle endpoint gives us this information. We get a count linked to the next and previous page of data and results, which is an array of vehicles. And here is the data we get for each vehicle. It includes an array of URLs to the endpoint for the films. The string array doesn't include the film names themselves. We have to go get them. Going back to the service, we map the data to pull just the results, which is our array of vehicles. But there is an issue with our data. Not all vehicles have prices. Since we are selling these vehicles, we need prices. So this code checks whether there is a price. If not, it randomly generates a price. Now looking at the vehicle list component, here we obtain the reference to the vehicle's dollar observable from the vehicle service. And in the template, we bind the list of vehicles to that observable using an async pipe here. This is where signals come in. Instead of an async pipe, we can bind directly to a signal. Going back to the vehicle list component, we want a vehicle signal here that we can bind in our UI. We can transform this vehicle observable to a signal here, or we can transform it to a signal in the service. Let's modify the service. First, let's make our observable private. And we see that generates some errors. We'll fix those in a moment. The only purpose of this observable is to handle the asynchronous HTTP GET operation. No code outside of the service will need access to that observable. Instead, they'll access our signals. So let's declare a signal here, after the observable. But instead of creating one using the signal constructor, we'll create a signal from our observable. And we need to import from observable. 
The automatic import isn't working for me here, so let's manually add it at the top of the file. We import from observable from at angular slash core slash rxjs dash interop. Scrolling back down, we then create our signal from our observable. If we hover over the signal, we see that it is defined with the correct type, signal of vehicle array. Recall from my prior video on signals that a signal is synchronous and must have a default value. So as the second argument to from observable, we'll define an empty array as the initial default value. Hovering over the signal again, we now see that it is a signal of vehicle array, or never array. That's because the compiler can't tell the type of this array. We can either add as vehicle to the array like this, or strongly type the from observable using the generic parameter. Let's do that. Now we have a signal created from our observable. From observable does several things. It automatically subscribes to and unsubscribes from the observable. Nice. And then every time the observable emits, the signal is modified to that emitted value. Now that our signal is ready, let's go back to the vehicle list component. We no longer need this observable. I'll delete it. We can instead define a signal that references the signal in our service. Next, we need to change the template. We can remove the async pipe and bind directly to the signal. And don't forget that to read a signal, we need to first open the box, so to speak, and call it scatter. Since the default value is an empty array, let's change the ngif to check for some array elements. We'll call dot length. We need to change the ng4 as well. Open parentheses to read the signal. Now let's see if it still runs. And here is our welcome page. Click vehicle list and we still see our list of vehicles. Only now they are bound to a signal instead of an observable with the async pipe. What does that give us? Finer control over change detection, which will continue to improve as more signal features are released. Next, let's tackle the action of selecting a vehicle. I'll close the console. Let's follow the vehicle selected action. It starts in the template. Here we have a group of buttons. We bind the click event to a method in the component called onSelected and pass in the selected vehicle's name. In the component, here is that method. In that method, we call a method in the service and pass in the selected vehicle name. Looking at the service and scrolling down, here is the method that the component calls. The method emits a value into our observable subject so that the code can react to that selection action. Here is the selected vehicle dollar observable. Notice it is of type vehicle or undefined. That's because the find operation returns undefined if the vehicle isn't found on the list. Scrolling up, here is the subject that reacts to our action. Let's change this subject to a signal. I'll delete the subject. We'll instead create another signal down here. I'll call it selected vehicle and set it to a new signal using the signal constructor. We'll set a default value of undefined since initially there is no selected vehicle. And we need to import signal. Notice that the type here is now just undefined. Let's add the generic parameter to strongly type the signal. It will be vehicle or undefined if no vehicle is selected. Next, we set the signal in the vehicle selected method. Scrolling down, delete the code that emits the value into the subject. We'll instead set the selected vehicle signal. The selected vehicle signal wants the vehicle, not the vehicle name. So we must first find the vehicle with that passed in name in the vehicle signal. I'll declare a constant found vehicle. We'll read the signal's value by calling it scatter. Since the value is a simple array, we use the arrayFind method to find the vehicle with that name. We then update the signal to the resulting vehicle using the set method. Cool! 
Now we no longer need the selected vehicle observable. Scroll up and delete it. But notice that we are still using this observable to get the films associated with that vehicle. How do we fix that? To retrieve the set of films that the vehicle was in, we need to call HTTP GET to get that data. HTTP GET is an asynchronous operation, so we want to continue to work with observables. We can transform our signal into an observable, so we can use it in our observable pipeline. Here, instead of the selected vehicle dollar observable, we'll call from signal and pass in the name of the signal. Then we import from signal. That's it. That's all we have to do to react to the signal and execute an observable pipeline. Now let's make this observable private, just like we did with the vehicle's dollar observable, and instead expose it as a signal. We again use from observable. This time our generic parameters are film array, both for the signal and its default value. Our service now simply exposes three signals. All of the observable work is encapsulated in this service. Now we're ready to fix up our component. In the vehicle detail component, we'll delete the vehicle dollar observable. Gone. We'll instead reference the signal from the service. Notice we're referencing the signal, not reading the signal, so we don't need the extra parentheses here. So here is our vehicle signal, which is the selected vehicle, or undefined if no vehicle was yet selected. What about our page title? The pipeline is basically using the vehicle to create the appropriate page title. Hmm, that sounds like it could be a computed property. Let's try it. Scroll up. Page title equal computed. And we need to import computed. Then we define an arrow function with our computed property. We read the vehicle signal. And if it's not null, we assign it to the desired string. I'll copy it from here. Here we need this dot vehicle. We need to read the signal. And it could be null. So let's add a question mark. Then we can delete the page title observable. Lastly, we add a signal for the reference to the vehicle's films. And we can delete the vehicle films observable. Now we have a nice, clean, and simple component that provides three signals. We are now ready to update our template. In the vehicle detail template, starting at the top, instead of the async pipe, we'll bind to our vehicle signal. And don't forget the open and closing parentheses because we're reading the signal's value, basically calling the signal's getter. Then we bind to the page title computed signal, again needing the open and closing parentheses. Scrolling down, where we display the films, we change from an async pipe to the signal, both here in the if statement and here in the ng4. Now because our vehicle is now a signal, Everywhere we refer to vehicle, we need to change it to vehicle parent parent. I'm going to scroll up and select vehicle dot. Then press Control Shift L. This sets a cursor on each occurrence. I'll add the opening and closing parentheses and a question mark since the selected vehicle can be undefined. Press Escape to close the cursors. I also need to change this one passed in to add cart. And now, because the vehicle signal could be undefined, I also need to change the add to cart method in the component to handle undefined. Going back to the component, we'll change the parameter to vehicle or undefined, then add a check for undefined. Before we can try out the vehicle detail, we have just a little bit of cleanup to do. In the vehicle list component, we reference the selected vehicle dollar observable, so we can highlight the selected vehicle in the list. We'll change that to instead reference the selected vehicle signal. And we can delete this observable. In the vehicle list template, we use ng class to set the style of the active or selected vehicle. We'll change that binding, remove the async pipe, and instead reference our signal. And don't forget the opening and closing parentheses to read the signal value.
Now we're ready to try it out. Our application came up, and we have our list of vehicles. Select one, and it appears in the detail with its list of films. Pick another one, and it displays its detail. It still works. Looking back at our components, we now have clearly defined signals identifying the data we want to track. We bind directly to those signals. And in the service, we encapsulate our observables and expose signals for easy access by the component. We create a signal from an observable using from observable and don't forget to define an appropriate default value. To react to a signal in an observable pipeline, use from signal. As you can see, observables and signals play well together. If you have any questions or would like to see a video on another signal topic, please post those questions or suggestions in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.